Okay, so today we're looking at conversions. How can you convert someone to becoming a lead for your sales team? And also, what are you going to do to convert them from a lead into an actual signed contract? So having this system in place is essential so that you're not wasting all the money you've outlaid and spent on getting your brand right, getting your story right, crafting your offers, communicating and emailing customers and, and working out all the elements that need to come together to give you that conversion into a lead and also progress that lead from moving into a sale and a signed contract. So now that we're having a look at conversions, I wanna run through this really quickly. There's a lot of stuff I wanna get through. So first of all, your number one goal as a builder is to get that vital face-to-face -face meeting. That's what you're pushing for. If you can get that face-to-face -face meeting, it gives you the opportunity to build confidence one-on-one, -on -one, get that rapport, get that affinity with the clients, and really you've started to forge a relationship. That's gonna give you a much better chance of them becoming a sale. So that's gonna be your objective when you're trying to convert people into sales. So the thing that you wanna pay attention to is what calls to action are they responding to? We've already looked at the framework. You've built up your blueprint. You've got these different offers in place. You've got emails that are getting sent out. You wanna pay attention to what calls to action are working. That is gonna give you a feedback loop so that you continually make improvements going forward with all of your advertising campaigns and with your assets that you're building out on your landing pages, for example, any, any brochures, any specific email hooks or offers that you're sending out that people are biting on, pay attention to what calls to actions are working and that's gonna help you modify and improve, which is part of our signature system later on, but that's gonna help you big time, so pay attention to that. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna have follow-ups and scripts in place so that your sales team can follow that routinely, so they're always taking the same actions and set some rules in place. So you might say to your sales team, listen, I want you to follow up a minimum of 10 times before you give up on any lead. Now remember, I'm gonna preempt something here that most sales reps are gonna say, what, 10 times? And they're not gonna to wanna to do it. They're gonna to wanna to give up at two times. But you've paid money to generate those leads. Now as a business owner and a, um, in a when I was in a building company, those leads aren't cheap. So you wanna make sure that you have a follow-up system that you dictate to your sales team and get them to stick to it, which is why we love CRMs. It lets you track everything that's happening, lets you keep a record of how many touch points someone's had before they get flagged as a lost lead. If you don't have a CRM in place and you're just relying on your salespeople to keep their own numbers, they're gonna tell you, oh yeah, yeah, I followed up, I followed up, I followed up. No, they didn't. So get a CRM in place and make sure you set a benchmark. For me, my benchmark is 15 touch points. If after 15 touch points, I haven't been able to get them on the phone or they're not responding to any emails, we'll, we'll kill that lead. But uh, I can tell you, most building companies will give up after one or two times and the sales reps will tell you, well, they're obviously not serious if they're not gonna get back to me. No, they're probably busy people. They're probably inundated with phone calls and emails. They've got better things in their life to do than talk to a sales rep. So they're gonna ignore you for a short time, but be persistent, follow up, and you will find there's gold in them, their heels. So follow up, follow up, follow up. Also give some scripts out to your sales team. So tell them what you wanna say. Give them offers that they can present to clients at different times. Tell them that there's an opportunity to meet with the designer next week because he's got a free uh, couple of days on his plate. Would they like to meet them? Tell them that you happen to be driving out uh, on the road and you're looking at, uh, you're happy to go and look at their block and meet them there if that's going to help them. Whatever the case, come up with a script so that your sales team knows, okay, here are 10 different reasons why I can give these people a call and then don't just feel like they're ringing up saying, hi, sorry I missed you, ring me back. That's not going to get any action. Give, give them some scripts that are benefit driven towards a customer of things that they may want and you'll find that they'll start to convert more leads and get a lot more of those leads into sales. Next, we want you to pay attention to the patterns. So when you're looking at your conversions, you wanna pay attention to the patterns that are happening so that you can make improvements. Again, this is part of the signature system. It's the last module that we'll look at, but you want to pay attention to the patterns that are happening. 
why people aren't converting into sales and what you can do. Sometimes it might mean you need to uh, give some more training to your sales team. Sometimes you might say, look, this offer isn't any good. They're not converting, but these ones are great. Let's stick with those. Let's add some more ad budget into there. So we get more good leads that will convert there. And let's come up with a different call to action because no one's responding to this one. So pay attention to the patterns that are happening over time. It's going to be really important. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about your conversion strategy when you run ads and do other marketing activities. And I'm just looking at three different sections here because we know we look at these numbers quite a lot for our clients. Let's say we're comparing Facebook ads, Google ads and SEO. So search engine optimization, which is organic rankings, uh, which is people not clicking on ads, but they're finding you on Google and then they click through to your website versus paid ads on Google where you're actually a sponsored ad and they click your link versus a paid ad in Facebook, not an organic post, but a paid ad where you've paid money to show an ad to your potential customer. These are the numbers that are also important. These are important because it's going to give you an idea of how you can grow your business and also which channel is effective and how effective it is and how much it costs to convert a sale. So let's look at this. Let's say just for a hypothetical example, you get 100 leads from Facebook in the first month, you get 50 leads from Google Ads and you get 600 people visiting the website with SEO. Out of those, you get five sales from the Facebook Ads you get one sale from the Google ads and one sale comes from your SEO traffic that hasn't clicked on any paid ads. You're spending seven and a half thousand dollars on Facebook ads per month, $625 on Google ads per month, $1,500 on SEO per month. What that means is when you break this down, your cost per sale is $1,500 to win a client from Facebook. So your averages, Every $1,500 you spend on Facebook, you're winning a customer. Every $625 you spend on Google Ads, you're winning a customer. And every $1,500 you spend on SEO, you're winning a customer. Now these numbers are really important. Number one, it plans out how much you need to spend to win the volume of work you want to win. But it's also really important to keep in mind that some of these methods are going to be capped in just how many leads you can generate. For example, in Google Ads, you may find you can only get 300 leads a, uh, a month before you saturate that channel. There's no more t terms that people are searching for on Google that's going to give you any more volume. You're just going to be capped. When you reach that point, you might say, well, $625, Google's our best platform, but you'll saturate that at some point and then just say, well, we don't get any more leads, no matter how much more money we throw at it. We're just spending more money and so your cost per lead is going to go up or cost per sale is going to go up, but you're not actually going to make any more sales volume. This is where you need to work out how to scale. So when you're scaling, you look at this and you might say, you know what, Facebook's giving us a lot of leads. Yes, it's $1,500, <clears throat> but we're actually able to scale. We're actually able to get more clients from that platform than we are from Google Ads. And for SEO to lift that number of conversions, that's a very, very long play and it's going to take a long time to get more SEO traffic, as you know. So it might be two or three years before you start getting three sales a month from Google, uh, from SEO. So think about this, pay attention to the patterns, pay attention to the numbers. This is all going to make sense and it'll help you generate more conversions for your business and you'll know where to spend your time and energy and money on generating the sales.